We are a little over two weeks removed from UFC 195. Of course, on that night, Carlos Condit fought Robbie Lawler to a very, very, very close split decision. In fact, I said on this show right afterwards, I thought Carlos Condit won that fight and should be the welterweight champion. Unfortunately, he came up just short. Wanted to talk to him about that and a whole lot more, so he is joining us right now on the phone. Carlos, how are you? I'm doing well, Ariel. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for the time. Uh, so like I said, we are around uh, a little over two weeks removed from that fight. Um, have you watched it since it happened? I did. Uh, I think I watched it twice. And what was your takeaway? Do you think that you won? Um, I do. Uh, I do feel like I won. Um, but it was super close, man. You know, and MMA judging is subjective. There's no real, um, I don't know, no standardized way that they're judging things. So, I mean, yeah, it was close. I thought you handled it so well. I mean, it was just amazing. You put out the blueprint how to handle a, a heartbreaking loss. But as you watch it twice at home, from the comfort of your home in Albuquerque, it, you get really upset that you were that close. A lot of people thought you won. Does it bother you that you don't have that welterweight title? Um, here and there. You know, when I watched the fight this weekend with Dominic Cruz, uh, you know, watching him walk away with a belt, it, you know, that, that got me a little bit. Um, but you know, for, for the most part, you know, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it, I guess. It, it, it felt to me and correct me if I'm wrong, like you were almost at peace. Like you did what you needed to do to potentially be champion. You fought as hard as you could. You showed incredible heart, your chin. I mean, I don't know what that thing is made of. Like, it's almost like you were, th you were saying in your mind, you know what, these, these three guys sitting around the cage, they could think what they want. I know what I did out there and I can live with that. Is that, is that kind of accurate? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, I, I put my focus into preparation for the fight, um, and going out there and, you know, competing to the best of my ability. Um, and in my experience, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but really what I, w my goal, every time I step out there is to leave absolutely everything in the cage. And I did that. Uh, I did that a few weeks ago. Um, so, you know, and, and, and I know this is, it's tough for a fighter, but I've been asking a lot of people this question and I wanted to get your take. This has become a very hot topic after your fight and Dominic's fight, the state of judging, whether it's having more mm -hmm. judges, changing the system. Do you have any thoughts on what you could do or, or do you think it's fine the way it is now? Um, no, I think that they, I think that things need to be changed a little bit. Um, you know, for for one, I feel like the ten point must system in MMA is not. Um, it's just it doesn't work well. Um, some fights it does, I guess, but mostly it doesn't because you know maybe a guy ekes out a round and gets you know get, wins the round, but it's very very competitive. And then the next round, a guy um, you know the the other guy absolutely dominates and has a huge round. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's getting scored the same as the, as the very, you know, as the other guy in the very, very close, close round. Um, you know, the, I think that they don't give enough 10 eights, uh, that, that would be, you know, that would make things, uh, I think a little, a little bit more accurate, uh, instead of, you know, these, these 10, nine rounds constantly. Um, but I would actually like to see the, you know, the 10 point must system, uh, you know, changed, you know, amended quite a bit. I was actually thinking of you on Sunday when when uh, Dominic won that close fight. I was wondering if you were at home thinking, why couldn't I got in the benefit of the doubt like that? Why were, were you ever thinking that while watching it? Um, no, I, not not really, man. I'm not dwelling too much on the decision. Uh, it is what it is. We all know that MMA judging is, um, you know, it's 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 wonky. It's you know sometimes, you know, you you just never know what, what the judges are seeing. Um, Somebody, I forget who it was on the on the post fight show. It was actually with you. Was was talking about the judge's perspective, and if they're on the wrong side of the action, they're not necessarily seeing what's really going on. Um, in in the Dominic Cruz fight, uh, you know he he slipped and and avoided a ton of punches, but by you know centimeters at at times. And if you were on the wrong side of that, it may look like he was getting hit. Um, and so I think that, you know, that sort of thing needs to be taken into account. Yeah, that is a great point. Brian Stan made that point, and I couldn't agree with him more. Um, when you're watching the fight, 
Did you think, okay, in this round, that round, I could have done a little more. I should have done this. Shouldn't have put myself there. In, in hindsight, you wish you did things differently. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, for, from a technical standpoint, um, I'm always critiquing my fights. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's always things that I'm like, okay, the, well, that worked well. And then other things that I'm like, oh, man, I, you know, I, I, I definitely could have, could have done things different. Um, there's always room for improvement. I'm a, I think I'm, I'm a, the biggest critic of myself. Um, but, uh, you know, technique wise, you know, that, that, and that's just like the, 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 the little stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, o- overall, like I said that night, I'm, I'm proud of what I did. In particular, is there anything that comes to mind that you could tell us from your perspective? I'm curious, just because you are your harshest critic, that you wish you did differently? Um, so there was, there was like a, there's a technique that worked very well in the first round. I actually dropped Lawler with it, um, where it's kind of like a, a, a you use the switch footwork, like a switch kick, which you throw an uppercut instead of a kick. And dropped him with that in the first round, and then I kind of went back to it over and over, and I got myself in some trouble um, because I think he he made an adjustment, and you know it 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 worked for me, and I didn't, and and I just stuck with that. So that was one thing. Um, I worked a lot on my wrestling for that fight, and feel like you know if I got a if I got a takedown or two, yeah. I would have definitely. Um, uh, 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 solidified those rounds in the judge's eyes for me. So, you know, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, you know, that's, it, it, it is what it is. It happened the way it did. And, uh, you know, it's all good. After his fight against Robbie Lawler in July, Roy McDonald said that was the best moment of his life. Like he was so happy throughout those 23 or so minutes, even though he was getting his face smashed in. Do you, do you echo those sentiments, echo those sentiments? Like, did you actually enjoy that whole process, even though it, it truly felt at the end, you guys were hanging over the cage, like you had absolutely zero left in you. you know, that moment is why I do this. Um, I, I'm in this sport to win and for, you know, for the, 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 the glory and the money and all that. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like that's not, that's not, you know, part of the reason I do this, but, Really, it's about pushing myself to, uh, to you know, to and past, uh, you know, the, these thresholds and seeing really wh- what I'm made of, and testing myself against these other guys that are doing the same thing. And um, so, yeah, I, I would say that I did have a blast. I had I had fun, man. I feel like, you know, that's what I live for. Mm. Um, I, I I live I live to fight. Ever since, you know, I've said in other interviews. This is the first time I got punched or I punched somebody else. First time I mixed it up with somebody. I knew that I loved to do this thing. And so that leads me to the obvious next question. Afterwards, you said it might be it for you that you were considering retirement. Have you thought about that anymore? Do you have uh, an official answer, an official stance on, on, on where you stand? Um, do not have an official answer, no. Um, so... I still love what I do. Um, I still have a lot of fight left in me. Um, but you know, from a, uh, from like a, 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 a long-term, you know, looking long-term, I have to, you know, do, do what's right for, for my health, for, for my family. Um, you know, things have been difficult the last couple of years. Um, uh, my wife's had some, uh, some health problems that are fairly major and, you know, it's, you know, the, the, these fights are super stressful. And like I said, I, I absolutely love what I do, but, um, you know, I got to do what's right for my family. And, and I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still weighing my, my options right now. Are you leaning towards retirement though, considering all of that? <sighs> I don't know. Um, part, part of me is, uh, part of me is man, but you know, there, I think there's, 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 one or two fights that would, would definitely, you know, get me interested and probably get me back out in the cage. If Dana White called you today and said, we're giving you the immediate rematch right away, we want to do this again. Does that get you back in the gym? And does that get you to say yes? <laughs> An immediate rematch with, with Lawler is about, is about the only fight that raises my pulse. Okay. Um, that, that I could get interested in. 
So it's not Nick Diaz, it's not GSP, it's not any of those guys. It's it's immediate rematch or bust essentially at this point. Um, those those other fights are a little bit more. Uh, um, the, the rematch with with Robbie is something like boom. I would have a I would have a a, a bout agreement in my in my <laughs> box real quick, and we could get that done. The other ones are kind of like you know like a little bit of a fantasy, right? Um. You know, I, I I hadn't thought too too much about those other ones, but those are big fights, um, big paydays. You know, I'm trying I'm trying to this is what I do for a living, and I'm trying to make money to, to to support my family. And if if the risk to reward ratio is is there and it looks good, um, you know, it's definitely something I'll can, I'll consider. Have you expressed this to the UFC? Like, did they call you after the fight in the last few days and and see where you're at? Um, I have yet to talk to them personally. Um, I know my management has been uh, in contact with them, um, so I think they they know my stance. Yeah, and, and and what are they telling you as far as you know their their take on your stance? Like, are they open to the rematch? Are they talking about? It? I don't think anyone would be upset with the rematch, to be honest. What are they saying to your management? Um, we don't have any like uh, we don't have any solid answers, um, but I think it's I think it's uh, definitely a possibility. Do you have a, a sort of deadline? As to when you'll move on, as to as to when you want to hear back, are you thinking in those terms? No, not necessarily. I mean, I I just spent uh, you, know, you know six months at least training for that fight. Um, went in there, you know, had a war. I'm not in any rush to do anything right now. What would Carlos Conda do if he stops fighting? Do you have any idea? Um, I think I do. I, I have a lot of different interests. Um, I would definitely still be involved in, in MMA. Um, I, I would, I would like to, to, to coach guys and, um, you know, be, be around the sport in, in, uh, that capacity at least. Um, you know, I got, I got some other things too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'll wait to the, I'll wait till they materialize before sure. I, uh, before I talk about it too much. Any chance you follow in your father's footsteps and, and go into the uh, political world? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I def- definitely not like in, uh, in the sense of like a like a um, an elected official. Um, he's trying to get me up there this uh, this legislative session to kind of go kick around and oh really hang out. Um, yeah, just um, and I've been doing that since I was a kid. Just you know, just listening to stuff. He always likes me to go and, you know, schmooze a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We'll see. I guess, yeah, it, it's in the realm of possibility. What is your family saying to you as far as your future? Do they want you to keep fighting? You know what? There's there's no really push either way. Oh. You know, they're, you know, they kind of support me no, no matter what I do. Um, and you know, they, they, give, they give me advice, but... You know, there's no there's no real push either way. I think they just kind of present me with with different options and different things to think about, and then ultimately the, the decision is mine. And, and when you talk about coaching, you want to do that eventually. Have you talked to Greg and 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 Winkle John and Brandon Gibson, those guys, about it, or would you go off and do your own thing? Have you gone to that point? Um, like, would you go under their bat? Would you just be a coach at the gym, or would you like to open your own gym and have your own students and go that route? I would probably not want to do my do my own gym. Um, I would uh, no. Nah, I think most likely I would I would stay under the the Jackson's Winkle John banner. Um, but yeah, not, probably not not do my own facility. Um, maybe do, maybe do my own fighters. You know, mm. you know, you know how boxing used to be, where it'd be like you know different camps in in the same you know training facility, but they're not all necessarily on the same team. Right. Um, speaking of which, we just had a few minutes ago BJ Penn on the show who officially announced that he is coming back and he's been at the gym for the past week. Have you run uh, into him at all? I have not been down. Okay. You know, I've, I've been doing some other stuff uh, and I have not been down to the gym in the last week. But I've seen the pictures. Yeah. It seems like everyone's posing with him and very happy to have him. Um, is that, yeah. is, do, you, do you feel like that's the right move? I mean, not knowing the guy, but just I feel like if BJ Penn would have announced he's coming back, I'd have been like, eh. but BJ Penn teaming up with Greg and Wink, I feel like, okay, if those guys are signing off on it, I can feel comfortable. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Do you agree? Um, he, he, well, he's always had, you know, all the talent in the world. And, you know, I guess the, um, the criticism in the past is, you know, his motivation or his, you know, his, you know, where he's training, who he's training with, whatever. Um, you know, that, you you can't really question that if he's if he's here training with with us you know I think we have a a, a great formula for success and and uh, you know you plug B J Penn into that I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, typically, after a fight like the one you just had, how long do you stay away from the gym for? Um, I have been I've been uh, I've been lifting and doing my strength and conditioning and and moving around um, a little bit. I haven't been down at Jackson's. Um, not not by any not for any reason. I just had I've been busy. I've been doing other stuff. Okay, um, but you know, I'm a week, two weeks, I'll probably be back in this week. Okay. Um, by the way, I wanted to ask you this before I let you go. Uh, I, I meant to ask you this before the fight. Um, all this talk about Conor McGregor and his movement, Ido Portal. You were kind of doing that before anyone was talking about it, right? Like a year ago. Is is it what you do? Is it similar to what I don't know how much you watched of his stuff. Is it similar to what the stuff uh, that Ito and Connor are doing? Um, I think there's different approaches. Uh, yeah, I've, I've watched the I've watched Ito Portal a little bit. Um, there's different approaches. I think the the goal, the end goal, is 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 the same. It's you know mastery of of movement and you know really any any situation or any any plane, um, and. Uh, and yeah, and, and it's a cool thing. And I, I've I've been training with uh, Irwin Lacour with the MoveNap program um, for a while. But even before then, I was you know I was working with a guy named Jake Herbert, who was a, a 2012 uh, Olympian, uh, who you know is very much into movement himself. He's you know Olymp- Olympic wrestler, and he he's developed a movement program for youth wrestlers. He incorporates that big time into his training and his coaching. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of different people and, 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 um, on another note, uh, uh, Ricky Lindell has been doing the same thing. They've been doing very, very similar things. So, you know, and I, I, I don't think anybody's copying or jumping on a bandwagon. It's just, uh, more, more like a, a great minds think alike kind of thing. Right. Um, okay. Uh, finally, you know, just to sort of wrap this up, is there a reason why, Carlos Condit is not banging the drum and jumping on, you know, I don't know if you look at social media, but a lot of people are in your corner supporting you, trying to get you that rematch, arguing, saying that this was, you know, a robbery and all things uh, equal to that. Is there a reason why you're not going out there and banging that drum? Is that just not your style? You're not comfortable with that? Is it because of where you're at in your career? Explain to us why you're taking this stance. Um, I guess it's just not my style. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're, I mean, I, I just go about things different, you know, different ways. Yeah. Um, you know, and I respect it, that. It, yeah. May, may happen. Um, but yeah, I was just, I guess it's not my style. And if someone says to me, okay, where is Carlos Condit at in his career right now? What's the proper way to describe the state of your career? Like where, where you're, 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 you're currently sitting. Uh, I, Good question. I don't know. I have to think about it. Would you ask me next time? <laughs> okay, fair enough. We'll leave it at that. That's a good cliffhanger. I do appreciate you coming on, though. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations on an amazing fight. In my opinion, right now, as we sit here, I mean, that, that very well could be the fight of the year, the round of the year. I mean, unbelievable what you guys did just a couple weeks ago. Thank you, Carlos. Enjoy the time off. And again, I hope you get what you're looking for. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. All right, there he is, Carlos Condit, joining us from Albuquerque, which uh, appears on, on some days to be the center of the MMA universe.